Welcome to South Florida's Coral Castle. What forces did one exceedingly small man use to build his castle near Florida City in 1923, which he called Ed's Place? According to the tour guide, Edward hired a young man to help him move this engineering marvel and fantasy garden to its current location in Homestead between the years 1936 and 1939. The large blocks of oolite limestone were cut and set with great precision. They are interlocked without any mortar. Edward did such a fine job that no light passes through the joints. One stone there weighs 30 tons. Wow. Most of the larger features are astrological symbols. Hmm. Edward was more likely into the occult. This was confirmed by our guide. And it's confirmed by anybody that walks around this place. It's pretty obvious. He was from a family of Masons and had plenty of symbology there to back that up. Edward was born in Latvia in 1887. His name name is Edward Leedskaldman. He was a hermit, jilted by his fiance, who was 16 years old. Edward was 26. Legend holds that Edward was not only jilted by his 10-year younger fiance, but that he developed terminal tuberculosis that he claimed magnets healed him of. The whole 16-year-old fiancé story may be more fiction than fact, but either way, it has become a part of the legend of Coral Castle. He built this garden and two-story tower, I use that term loosely, all by himself, working secretly at night using no modern machinery, only his bare hands working by the light of a lantern. Did he work at night because it was cooler? Well, it is South Florida. That's one reason. Or was he using reverse magnetism or supernatural abilities to carve, move, and place the stones? Edward gave tours of his unique castle, charging 10 cents at the old Florida City location. But then, when he moved to the new location off the what would become Dixie Highway, he started asking for 25 cents. And if visitors didn't have it, he would let them in anyway. A thousand tons of limestone, generally referred to as coral, form the walls, astrological features, tower, and garden furniture. Besides being enamored by the features, take a closer look at the rock, which is filled with fossil shells and coral. The property was known as Rock Gate because of the eight-foot-tall, huge rock revolving gate on the back wall. Edward had the nine-ton gate perfectly balanced. His method was a secret until the gate got stuck. Ladder owners removed the gate and have struggled since to keep the gate exact. They can't do it. They have even resorted to shaving off some of it. Outside the castle garden walls are two quarries where Edward gathered new coral stones for additions. The vertical stones that comprise the walls are a consistent eight feet high and weigh approximately six tons each. Each. Edward was obsessed with astronomy, as evidenced in the most prominent features, such as the working sundial, his polar telescope, and obelisk, the site's largest piece, weighs 30 tons. Celestial stars, Saturn, Venus, Mars, and the Moon. Ed even had a rock telescope, no lens included, and it was aimed at Polaris, the North Star. You can view through a hole that he has in the wall that goes through a hole in the 25-foot-tall megalith that weighs 22 tons. Other yard ornaments, as I call them, include a 5,000-pound heart-shaped table. It's called the Valentine's Table, and it is found in the Guinness World Book of Records. A water well with sliding rock disclosure. A barbecue pit. Ed sold hot dogs to visitors. Anything to make, well, I could say a buck. I mean, maybe he did make a buck, but anything to make a buck. A table shaped like Florida with 1,000-pound rocking chairs. And, of course, Key West. A bathtub. Two beds. A throne room and 25 rocking chairs shaped like crescent moons. There are also two 25-foot-tall monoliths. Oh, by the way, his hand dug well, reached the water table of the Biscayne Aquifer, and it still runs with 55-degree cold water. He slept on the second floor of the tower in a hammock or mattress suspended from the ceiling, it depends on whose story you hear, to keep crawling bugs off. Good idea, Ed. The current tours do not allow access up the 16 steps to view the second floor. You know, remember the fiancé? But they do have his workshop open to view, which houses tools excavated from the site. Edward made good use of car parts in swinging and swiveling his rock art. Edward continued working on his castle until his death in 1951. The name, 
Coral Castle is a relatively recent phenomena. We can only speculate how Edward did it all, and if you research this odd locale or visit yourself, I'm sure you will develop your own opinion on this small man. How he lifted and carved every single block, totaling an estimated two to three million pounds all by himself. Remember, Edward was five feet tall and weighed a hundred pounds and excelled with his fourth grade education. Tons of questions surround Ed and his castle, like most of the details. Each story grows as it is retold through the decades. One of those stories is how Ed would climb a ladder to peer over the wall to see if the people nearby were tourists or trespassers. Ed never married, and his secrets died with him. Okay, but you've got to wait. I've got a few more things to tell you about the Coral Castle. Our tour guide, he was a hoot. This picture was taken at summer solstice at midnight. The moon lined up perfectly with the 25 foot tall obelisk that did I remember to tell you? It's also six feet below the ground. Ed, you did good. And yes, there's one more thing I meant to mention about the gate. Remember when the gate broke? Well, when it was removed, the engineers discovered how Leedscalen had centered and balanced it. He had drilled a hole from top to bottom and inserted a metal shaft. The rock rested on an old truck bearing. Remember, he liked using old car parts. It was the rusting of this bearing that messed up the whole gate. But what's crazy about it? It took six men and a 50 short ton crane to remove the door. Yet Ed made it and placed it there all by himself. And it was perfectly balanced. Flip-flops on the ground. 